Hey there, Betty. Hello, and welcome to Relaxed Mail. All right, today we're talking about blocking statements. What are they? Why are they bad? And how you can avoid them? folks um, blocking statements these what are they um, specifically these are these are statements that you tell yourself so that you don't go any further uh, a lot of times we use blocking statements as a means to keep a keep ourselves from uncomfortable thoughts and ideas uh, it's a way of, of uh, giving ourselves permission to not dig any further because we are as a as a as a species humans we really don't like to uh, to be in uncomfortable situations now it's good for us to be uncomfortable because the more if you're uncomfortable not not in pain or anything but if you're uncomfortable you're um, you're going to grow more uh, but the resistance that we often face is the fact that our mind is telling us, "Hey, dude, this thing is not in our comfort zone. We don't, we don't want to do this. This is not a good thing. This is probably going to end badly. You're going to die. You're going to be embarrassed. You know, a whole bunch of these other uh, absurd stories that we're actually going to t we actually tell ourselves, all just to make sure that our because our subconscious, our uh, I believe it's the amygdala." is having a run and telling us and filling our brain our our conscious minds with 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 garbage <laughs> is a good way to put it now you can there's reasons why you want to be uh, why being uncomfortable is is, is bad uh, one let's look a uh, best example I've ever come across is when you're working out say you're lifting weight you know you, when you're lifting weights and stuff, you're, what you're actually doing when you, when you do a curl or push up or, or run or, or set ups or anything like that is that effort that you do is, is stressing the muscle fibers. So when you stress the muscle fibers, you also break them down to the point where they, they fall apart. They become damaged and they, they're, they're destroyed. They, they break down. Um, doing that, your body comes in and has to clean up. Clean up the trash, and as it's cleaning up the excess and, the, and everything that's been broke down, uh, everything from those broke down muscle fibers, um, your it, it creates pain. All right, you're tearing the muscle fibers is essentially what you're doing. So you're, as you tear those muscle fibers more and more and more, you're going to increase the amount of pain. That's where you get the delayed onset muscle soreness. Um, what happens though is when you break your your body takes the different compensation, uh, different uh, problems that it, uh, it encounters and overcompensates. So if you want bigger muscles, you have to go through that soreness. You have to break those muscles down. So your body goes, wow, we broke down a lot of muscle today. I better double that up uh, or better reinforce that. And so it'll bring, it'll uh, replace the broke down muscles plus a little extra plus a little extra, plus a little extra, plus a little extra, until eventually, you know, you go, you, you walk around, you look like, uh, you look like uh, Lou Ferrigno back when he was playing the Hulk. But to do that, you have to go through the discomfort of muscle soreness. Um, if you are wanting to be a speaker, you have to do the uncomfortable act of getting out in front of people and speaking. You can't just say, I'm going to be a speaker, and then suddenly, poof, voila, you're going to be a speaker. No, you're going to walk out there, and you're going, and, um, well, yeah, we're doing this and we're talking about this topic. You have to learn how to how to speak. And that's one of the reasons why I do these videos is because it gets me out there. It gets me to speak. And the more I speak, the more I talk, the more I talk, the better I the better I'm communicating because in all reality, if you watched any of the other videos besides for this one, I could suck at communication. So <laughs> the reason why your amygdala fills your mind with all these worries is because it understands that you being comfortable 
equals you being safe. You're not going to die if you're comfortable. Um, if you go, um, and that's because we used to know that when we were a, a, a nomadic tribe, if we were some in a, in a valley someplace and it was an open field and we saw deer over there, we knew basically that those that was going to be all right. Uh, we were able to go out there. We could see other dangerous items, creatures coming at us, and we had uh, enough time to kind of maybe be able to react and fend ourselves off. But the moment we had to go into the dark forest, you know, all of a sudden you didn't have quite as long of a view. You didn't have quite as much of a chance to react to something coming at you that was hiding behind a tree. Um, all of a sudden, you've got a saber-toothed tiger that has jumped down on top of you and decided to use you uh, as a cat toy. So you're, you're, when you got into places that, where there was a possible, where you were unfamiliar with, with like the forest, uh, or if you go into a cave, you know, something like that, there might be ghosts. You, you, you come up with these weird, uh, these weird thoughts that really do a good job of making sure that you're scared. So. Your amygdala works real hard to make sure that you stay comfortable. But like I said, staying comfortable doesn't help you succeed. Uh, and as a leader, you want to be able to get yourself to the point where you're going to be, uh, where if you come into it a into a a, uh, a predicament, you're gonna you want to know how to react to that predicament. And if you are the first time in, you know, if you're if you don't know how to handle the stress of being you know, of a of, a, of your empire falling apart, for example, um, your life likely to just crumble and and uh, and lose sight of what you're wanting to do if so, some type of major setback happened. So you want to make sure. So as a leader, you want to make sure that you can. You're used to being in uncomfortable situations so that you can lead the other people who have never been through that experience before. Um, now, all of that talk about, um, about being comfortable leads us over to why a lot of times, if you come across a problem where you say, uh, you keep running into this roadblock, you're, all of a sudden, people start building, uh, start coming to your site. Uh, say you're you're a web designer, uh, or you're you're a uh, uh, you're a blogger. You finally you've been working, you've been working um, day and night getting your site up, and all of a sudden you have finally got, you know, 500 to a thousand people hitting your site every day. Things are going great. Uh, you've actually even had a couple people uh, talk to you about uh, maybe doing some business. That's awesome. You're great. It's awesome. This is what you've been wanting, and all of a sudden, you stop answering emails. You start um, slacking off. You start. You've hit your um, and uh, as uh, as uh, as it said in uh, the Big Leap, you hit your upper limit. Um, you the only the place where you're successful. Um, and you can't quite get past that spot. You you run into it. It's just you run into it. You run into it, and you can't seem to get past that. You start sitting there, and you actually are contemplating why. Usually, after the failure, you may sit back and you go, "Well, why did I fail? Why did I do this? Why did I?" If you're doing any type of introspection, you're, you're asking yourself why. Um, a lot of times, you will come up with, "I don't know," or. Man, I just that whole thing just gets me so dead burn confused. I just get so mixed up with what I need to be doing there. Those two phrases, I don't know, I was confused, are two of the biggest blocking statements that you will ever come across. They are those two phrases are designed to keep you keep your deeper introspection um, from getting any deeper. Keeps you from from being able to really find out what is it about your upper limit that's that's holding you back um, and the reason why these are such thorough and such good blocking statements is because how are you supposed to fight a lot of people go well how are you supposed to fight that if you say I don't know let's 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 br just break down both these two uh, these two thoughts uh, these two blocking statements one 
I don't know. We'll start with the first one. Well, how are you supposed to get past that? Because, I mean, if you don't know, then you don't know. If you don't know, you don't know. If And that's precisely what your subconscious is hoping will will uh, will hold the line. Is It's like, well, it, you can't help it. If you don't know why you're doing this, then there's you, you don't know why. You can't go any further past than I don't know. But you can actually get around that by asking a simple question. But if I did know, blank. But if I did know, okay, I don't know. But if I did know, it's because I am afraid of being successful and losing who I am. I am afraid that uh, I am going to lose my friends. I am afraid that I uh, people will see me as the fraud I really am. And because of those those fears, your that helps that your your uh, your make.